so today the topic of our video will be solution of wave equation in one dimension right and you can see this equation a c square times u x x this is the second order partial derivative with respect to x and this is the second order partial derivative with respect to t right and this is called as wave equation and you can see that this is a linear equation as all the powers of derivatives are one right and this is homogeneous equation since every derivative is a second order derivative okay so let me start that how it is modeled though i will uh, not go into the detailed modeling of the wave equation um, that involves some laws of physics like uh, newton's second law of motion and tensions and etc right i will uh, give uh, an overview of that modeling right okay so uh, to produce a wave equation what we need uh, consider a homogeneous and elastic string right placed over placed along x axis right let x equal to 0 and x is equal to capital l be the ends of string after stretching after stretching right so you need a homogeneous and elastic string uh, what do i mean by homogeneous uh, homogeneous means uh, the string is of same na nature or same density right or you can say that mass per unit length is same right the string should be uniform right and, uh, and the second necessity is the elasticity in order to produce vibrations you need an elastic string right and that should be placed along the x axis with its uh, suppose this is a string right and uh, it is placed on x axis with its left end coinciding at x is equal to 0 and uh, right end at x equal to capital L right means capital L is the length of the string after stretching it okay now uh, to produce vibrations in it if you want to produce vibrations in your stretched string uh, suppose it is distorted and it can be distorted in two ways i will discuss them later it can it is distorted suppose it is distorted uh, from its initial position uh, to those vibrations will be distorted from its initial position uh, so that the vibrations are described by the p d e and that is 1 over c square del square u over del t square is equal to del square u over del x square right where c is a constant and that constant is equal to capital t over rho and this capital t is the tension tension in a string and this rho is the mass per unit length mass per unit length right okay so this is uh, the wave equation right and to derive this wave equation you need uh, newton's second law of motion and the uh, tension in the string will come into play if you want to derive this you can see the derivation in any textbook of this i will not going into the detailed derivation of that right but uh, what you want to know is that you have a string 
with its left hand end placed on x is equal to 0 and right hand placed on x is equal to capital L after stretching it right and you want to produce vibration in order to produce vibration you have to distort this string either by uh, either by uh, giving the initial velocity to it or either by giving initial displacement to it right then the vibrations will start and those vibrations are described by this equation and this is called wave equation right and c is a constant and uh, c is equal to t over rho t is tension in the string and rho is the mass per unit length right okay now I will uh, give the solution of this uh, wave equation, how the solution of this wave equation can be achieved, right? And for that, and uh, one more thing, I should write the initial conditions. In order to produce vibrations in a string, uh, you have some initial conditions or you call them boundary conditions or natural conditions, right? Uh, see, with this equation, with First point initial conditions first is initial conditions or boundary conditions boundary conditions right and the first condition is u 0 comma t is equal to 0 and u l comma t equal to 0 for t greater than equal to 0 t is actually time right so u is the displacement or you can call it vertical displacement right and uh, when x is 0 means at the left end as i said that the left and right end are fixed right so at the left end there will be no vibration right at the right end x equal to capital L there will be no vibration and uh, that's why I have written u is equal to 0 and u is equal to 0 for the right hand and for the left hand as both ends of our string are fixed in order to produce vibration you have to fix your these two ends right okay then the vibrations will be produced right so these are the boundary conditions and uh, let me write initial conditions initial conditions right initial conditions means uh, conditions for t is equal to 0 time is 0 the first condition is u x comma 0 is equal to fx and fourth condition is del u over del t x comma 0 is equal to gx right and since we have x here so for x lying between 0 and L this is obvious right okay now what does it mean this condition this condition means that uh, when time is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 right uh, the initial displacement is given by this function fx as I said that uh, in order to produce vibration you have to give the initial displacement to the string or initial velocity so this condition is describing the initial displacement and what is that if the string is like this right initially then in order, order to produce vibration you have to pull this string this way like you pick up the middle point of this string and you pull this way right and in that case it will form a triangle right you pull this way middle point this way then the string will take the form of a triangle right and the equation of that sides of a triangle are given by this fx right and as soon as you release that string your time starts t is equal to zero right and that will produce the vibrations in a string so this is the condition when the string is pulled right when you play the guitar right you pull the string either you pull the string or you plug the string right so this is the condition when you start vi start vibrations by pulling the string and then releasing it at the time of release the time t is equal to zero right and see the another condition this uh, indicates the initial velocity initial velocity why i'm calling it initial because t is equal to zero right the another way to play the guitar is to uh, just flick the string this is a string of guitar and you don't want to pull it you just flick it with your finger this way right in that case there will be initial velocity to, to the string but no initial uh, displacement right or the another way to um, 
uh, produce vibration is that you plug you pick two points rather picking than one point you pick two points one is this point and this point right and you pull them in opposite directions this upward and this downward right two points in opposite directions so forces are applied in opposite directions equal forces in opposite directions and in that case there will be no displacement but there will be initial velocity right so there are two ways to produce vibrations in a string you can think of a guitar string right and generally when uh, this fx is non zero this gx is zero and if fx is zero and this gx is non zero and you can uh, see that why it is so right if you want to give vibrations in a guitar string by pulling it right obviously the initial velocity will be zero and if you want to produce vibration in a guitar string by flicking it the initial displacement should be zero right so these are called the boundary conditions and these are initial conditions so i will be using the all these conditions uh, to solve this uh, wave equation pde right now i'm going to solve this wave equation and i will be using the method as i discussed in our last video uh, the solution of differential equation by the method of separation of variables we have to take the solution as a product of two uh, functions one is a function of x and another is a function of t then i plug that u here and then i will be obtaining two ordinary differential equations right so following the same method separation of variables <clears throat> suppose the solution is of the form u as a function of x comma t and note that what is u one axis is the x axis on which the string is uh, placed x axis right horizontal axis and the other axis is u axis right u axis along with the vibrations are measured right you are interested in finding the displacement vertical displacement along u axis you can take it y axis also in that case you have to uh, replace this u by y right Okay, the solution is of the form. We are assuming that the solution of this wave equation is of the form u x t is equal to capital X of x and capital T of t. And you know that this is a pure function of x and this is a pure function of t, right? Then I will plug this u here in my wave equation, right? And uh, I will get uh, uh, this gives on. substitution in this equation 1 over c square del square u over del t square equal to del square u over del x square and substituting this here i will be getting a uh, uh, 1 over c square i think that will be capital x t double dash equal to capital x double dash and t where capital x double dash is equal to d square x by dx square the ordinary derivative right and t double dash is equal to d square t over dt square right so you know that why they are ordinary derivatives right okay so dividing this by x t i will get divide by capital x t i will get 1 over c square t double dash over t is equal to x double dash over x right and let me take uh, both of these ratios is equal to some another constant k say and that is called separation constant separation constant this k is called separation constant right okay okay now that will give rise to two differential equation one will be in t and another will be in x right so this gives implies two differential equation the first should be x double dash minus kx equal to 0 and another will be t double dash minus c square k t equal to 0 right and you can see that these both are ordinary differential equations of second order you can solve them writing the auxiliary equation that will be m square minus k is equal to 0 right and that will give plus minus root k and so on i am not solving them right we'll solve them in numericals and uh, let me call them equation number uh, this should be one equation number one and this is my equation number two right okay 
Now solving them is very easy. After solving them, I will get capital X as a function of a small x, and after solving this equation number two, I will get capital T as a function of a small t, right? And then I will plug those capital X and capital T in here in my solution. Where is that? This one, right? This is my solution. Let me call it A. Then I will be getting u in terms of x and t. Then I will use these conditions: first, second, third, fourth. Then I will obtain a solution, right? Okay. So now the, now the question comes uh, about this separation constant, right? The nature of this separation constant. I am discussing that, right? Nature of this separation constant. Nature of k, the separation constant, right? Okay. So we will discuss three cases. Uh, and before uh, discussing about the nature of k, uh, I should uh, first use these boundary conditions in my solution A. Let me use these two conditions here, right? Okay. Uh, using condition number one, that is u02 is equal to zero in A in my solution capital A, right? I will be getting u and x comma zero means sorry zero comma t in place of uh, where is that one? this one in place of x i have to put zero and in place of t i will have t i will get u uh, zero comma t equal to x zero and t t right condition number one in my solution now what is u zero t using first condition that is zero and that will give rise to x zero multiplied by t t equal to zero right and this is the most important point there will be two possibilities either this x0 is equal to 0 or tt is equal to 0 right and in case if you take this tt is equal to 0 right this tt is equal to 0 right then uh, that will that will give us the trivial solution if this tt is equal to 0 then plugging that tt here that will give me u is equal to 0 that is a trivial solution and we don't want to get a trivial solution we want non trivial solution non zero solution right so implies x0 is equal to 0 right as you know that tt is equal to 0 gives trivial solution and we don't want a trivial solution so this is the condition x0 should be equal to 0 right and uh, now using this condition number 2 boundary condition number 2 on our solution using condition number second in equation number a right and that will give me u l comma t equal to capital x l t t right and since u l comma t is equal to zero from condition number two that will produce capital x l t t equal to zero and that will eventually give this x l equal to zero because Again, I cannot take tt is equal to 0 because that will produce a 0 solution. Therefore, implies x l equal to 0 as tt equal to 0 gives trivial solution u x t is equal to 0. Right? u x t equal to 0 and we don't want 0 solution. Right? u x t equal to 0. Right? So these conditions are boundary conditions and uh, we have them in x and x only right means these boundary conditions are incorporated in equation number one so see your equation number one that is in x so after solving this equation number one i will be using these two conditions equation number one right now i will uh, come back to the nature of k right and now uh, since nature of k for k three cases arise right the first case is if k is equal to 0 if k is equal to 0 right what happens is this k equal to 0 where is that k this k k is equal to 0 right second case will be for k positive and third for negative k right if i take k is equal to 0 so by equation number 1 
equation number one will will be equation number one becomes x double dash equal to zero and on integrating it twice i will get capital xx is equal to ax plus b a linear function because this is a second order differential equation and on integrating it twice i will be getting a linear function ax equal to b where a and b are arbitrary constant right so this will be my solution is solution right and now i have to use these conditions this condition and this condition right first i will use this x0 is equal to 0 and then that will give me um, 0 equal to b b is equal to 0 and then i will use this condition xl equal to 0 and that will produce a equal to 0 means on using these conditions written inside boxes i will be getting xx is equal to 0 right using the two conditions x0 is equal to xl equal to 0 we get x x is equal to 0 right and after getting xx is equal to 0 i will plug that xx is equal to 0 in my solution number a and that will again give to 0 solution uxt is equal to 0 and that's the thing we don't want right we get x is equal to 0 uh, and from a we get uxt is equal to 0 again a trivial solution a uh, trivial solution right so it concludes that k cannot equal be equal to 0 right if k becomes 0 then we are getting the trivial solution right so k cannot be equal to 0 now we will discuss the second case when k is positive right uh, let me rub it first so now for k greater than z b f k is greater than 0 then our equation number 1 this equation see this equation equation number 1 if k is positive and that will produce uh, an auxiliary, auxiliary equation m square minus and let me take k is greater than 0 then equation 1 become x double dash minus p square x equal to 0 where I have taken k is equal to p square and that is always positive right rather than writing it as k I should write it as p square p is a real number right and the square of a real number is always positive that will be most more general okay then that will give rise to an auxiliary equation m square minus p square equal to 0 and that will give me m is equal to plus minus p right so distinct roots will be there so the homo the solution for this equation will be this gives uh, x x is equal to capital a e to the power p x plus capital b e to the power minus p x as solution where capital a and capital b are arbitrary constants right so there is a solution if i take k as a positive number right but what happens if i use these conditions on x x this condition and this one right so using that condition using x 0 equal to x l equal to 0 we get right first i will be using x 0 is equal to 0 if i put small x is equal to 0 in my solution then i will be getting a plus b is equal to 0 right and the second time for this condition i will be getting a times e to the power p l plus b times e to the power minus p l is equal to 0 and that will give rise to two different equations with the right hand side 0 for both cases and on solving that them i will be getting capital a is equal to capital b is equal to 0 you can solve them or verify them right we get uh, capital a equal to capital b is equal to 0 you should verify it yourself right okay then xx is equal to 0 is the solution of this differential equation and on plugging this xx in my equation number a i have read that equation <coughs> then guess uxt is equal to 0 because uxt was the product of xx and tt right and that will become 0 again a trivial solution a trivial solution and since we don't want a trivial solution we need a non trivial solution right that's why uh, this k greater than 0 case should be avoided means k cannot be equal to 0 as well as k cannot be positive 
right then we are left with only one case uh, for negative k right case number c if k less than zero in that case equation number one this equation equation number one becomes x double dash plus p square x equal to zero where k is equal to minus of p square and that is less than zero you can see that i have taken negative sign before p square uh, in order to take k negative right and uh, you can see that if you solve this differential equation you write auxiliary equation then you will be getting m square plus p square equal to zero and that will produce two complex roots conjugate pairs plus minus eta p and that will give rise to a solution having trigonometric function right so okay this gives i am not writing the solution in detail you can solve it yourself this is an ordinary differential equation right uh, this gives capital x x is equal to capital a cos px plus b sin px as a solution as solution and this capital a and capital b are arbitrary constants right now uh, i want to use that those two conditions these two conditions in boxes x0 0 x0 0 using x0 equal to 0 in my solution i will be getting 0 if i put 0 this 0 okay this will be a plus 0 then that will give me a equal to 0 we get a equal to 0 right and my solution reduces to then the solution reduces to xx is equal to b sine p x is solution and this is the refined solution or reduced solution after using that condition number this condition x0 is equal to 0 right now obviously this solution is containing the lesser number of arbitrary constants as compared to this one right so we'll be taking this one right okay so this is the solution now using my second condition x l equal to 0 using x l equal to 0 in my refined solution i will be getting b sine p l equal to 0 right and now or two cases may arise either b is equal to 0 or this sine function becomes 0 if you take this capital b is equal to 0 then what will happen taking b is equal to 0 and then plugging that b here i will be getting a zero solution again the trivial solution case right and i have to avoid that trivial solution case so i have to take the sine function as a zero it implies sine pl equal to zero and you should know the reason why i have written the sine function as zero why not this b is equal to zero right okay the sine pl is equal to zero and when the sine function is zero sine is zero for its integral multiple of pi you know that and belongs to integer okay right and that will give rise to p is equal to n pi over l right and is the integer this is the value of p right okay and uh, right n is okay and is an integer n is an integer right then i will plug this small p here in my solution right solution for this equation number one only this is not the complete solution complete solution is xx times tt the second is, equation is still left untouched right okay. this gives x x is equal to b times sine n pi over l right where n is integer and uh, n equal to 1 2 3 dash 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 you know this is a step however here we have written that n is an integer integer means the negative values are also allowed zero values also allowed but in this step i have skipped the zero value and the negative values of n and you should know the reason why it is so if i take n is equal to zero right if i take n is equal to zero then putting n is equal to zero here will produce xx is equal to zero and that will again give rise to zero solution so i have to avoid everything that gives rise to zero solution so you have to avoid n is equal to zero right second thing is that if i take n is equal to negative 
number means n is equal to minus 1 then what will happen putting n equal to minus 1 here right uh, will produce a negative sign here because if sine of minus theta is minus sine theta that will produce a negative sign here right if you put a negative of these integers then that will produce a negative sign here right and then negative b is a, again a constant b negative b and writing negative of b and b are same thing b is an arbitrary constant so there is no need to overwrite these values means uh, writing n equal to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 will be the just the overwriting of the solution you have to avoid that overwriting or over counting the solution right so this is fine so i am writing here why you should know the reason why i have avoided n is equal to 0 because it is producing a zero solution and why i have avoided uh, writing the over counting of the solution uh, writing by writing n equal to minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 and so on so this is my xx in terms of um, so here i should have x value of p is this and x is missing here x right so this is x in terms of small x okay and uh, similarly we have this equation um, another equation the equation number two we can solve this equation equation number two right and uh, on solving it i will be getting something solution right okay and uh, i have to consider the case for k greater than sorry k less than zero means k should be equal to minus p square here right and i will be getting some sine and cos functions i should uh, write them i have to erase all this and remember this equation t double dash minus c square kt equal to zero and i will be going to solve this and we'll be using these conditions okay okay so solving equation number two equation number two and uh, you remember that equation that was t double dash minus c square kt is equal to zero that was my equation number two if you remember that okay and uh, on solving it i will be getting uh, i have to take k is equal to how much this is accepted the sign of k is accepted that that should be a negative and that is equal to minus of p square or i should write it as t double dash plus c square p square t is equal to zero means you have to remember this point k is equal to minus p square okay then that will again give uh, rise to a solution that are periodic in nature and uh, that are i will write the solution directly m square plus cp c square p square equal to zero that will give rise to uh, plus minus i plus cp right and the solution will be this gets t t is equal to uh, should i write the new constants a and b are used here right c right and uh, the first will be cos c p t plus d sine c p t is solution where c and d capital c and capital d are arbitrary constants right and again you can put this p here you know that what is your small p that is n pi upon capital l we'll plug that capital t t is equal to c times cos and that will become uh, c p so that will be c n pi t by l plus d times c n pi t over l is solution so this will be our solution right and uh, right and on this solution i have to use my initial conditions uh, those were i think u uh, on t right or should i uh, place this t and capital x in my solution my equation number a right then equation number a my full solution was u x t is equal to capital x x multiplied by capital t t this was my complete solution and putting those values here i will be getting u x comma t equal to capital x x the value of capital x x b sine n pi x over l and multiplied by this c cos c n pi t over l plus d sine c n pi t over l 
right, is solution, right? And you will multiply these constants here. You can multiply this constant instead BC and BD, and that will produce a new constant, right? Okay, we will do that in numericals. Okay, uh, you should remember this solution after applying the two of the boundary conditions, right? And initial conditions are still unused. We will use them in another new numericals, right? So this is the kind of solution we will be getting in order to solve a wave equation in one dimension, right? And with the both ends fixed for the string, right? There are other cases too for which the ends are not, not fixed or one end is fixed, right? But in this case, we are discussing the case and both the ends of the string are fixed, right? So this is an overview of the solution of wave equation and uh, we will uh, try to take some examples of this wave equation in our next video for this video, thanks.